All right. I'm here today with Dan Pelson. He's the COO of Area 15. How are you doing today, Dan? I'm doing great. Thank you. How are you doing? I'm doing amazing. And, uh, you know, Dan, I, I think, uh, you know, I, I've talked to a number of people in Vegas. So, you know, I'm not going to give you the, the, the question about is Vegas back? Because from what everybody tells me, Vegas is back. Um, so what I'd love to talk to you today about is, is where you're at and what you're doing. Um, you know, I, I don't know how many people out there are, are overly familiar with Area 15. But, you know, if you could walk us through what Area 15 is, I, I, I think it's going to blow people's mind. Absolutely. So thanks for having me, Chris. I appreciate it. And uh, yes, what is Area 15? We're fond of saying Area 15 does not exist. Um, so that could be a little <laughs> troubling for some people when they're trying to find the place, but it does exist. Trust me, uh, you can Google it. Um, so Area 15 is is a, a district. It's a immersive entertainment district right in the heart of Las Vegas. It's not on the strip purposefully. It's a destination-based play, um, but geographically it's minutes from the strip. Um, and, and what we provide there is a collection of really, the best way to put it, are, are mind-blowing experiences that are provided by tenants of ours. And I'll talk about some of those, the F&B experience, the restaurants and the bars, events that we do. Um, we do tons and tons of events in multiple event spaces, uh, both for the public and for, for corporate clients. And then with, um, with uh, activations, things that just are just crazy fun things for people to do as they walk around. And it's free to enter, kind of like a mall. You know, we don't like to be compared to a mall per se, but, you know, in that sense, it's free to enter and wander around. You can come in and, and leave without, you know, opening your wallet. But everything, obviously, um, that that you do there has a either a ticket price or there's a bundle price or whatever it is. So, and the business is really built on our tenants, as I was saying, which are uh, deeply immersive art experiences. One, our, our a couple of our major tenants are Meow Wolf, which you may be familiar with, and your listeners may be familiar with. It's fifty thousand square feet of just you know, of a metaverse, just a different world. And like everything, it's very hard to explain, but you've got to see it because you've never seen anything like it. Or Wink World, which comes to us from Chris Wink, who's the co-founder of Blue Man Group. Illuminarium, which just opened a couple of weeks ago, which is this crazy, you know, projection map uh, world that you, you walk into. It's 30,000 square feet of being in the middle of, the, uh, of a safari or an outer space. Um, uh, Lost Spirits Distillery, which is kind of like Willy Wonka for adults. You wander around in 20,000 leagues under the sea. I mean, it's just one thing after another. That, that's one category. On the other hand, for like the bros, you know, we also have just uh, what we call competitive leisure, which many call competitive leisure. We have axe throwing with dueling axes, five iron golf, which is golf simulation. You can play one of 120 or 30 courses, and it's very, very realistic. Uh, Virtualis, which is a VR experience, and uh, Emporium Arcade, which is you know retro adults only arcade. So those are our tenants. Um, and, and, and they're bringing a mix and it's fully integrated, right? So it's contextual. They, they all look like they belong there, which is very hard to do. You have to curate them carefully and then they all have to buy into the vision. Then we have events. We have a bunch of event spaces, completely projection map room called the portal fits about 800 people. We do concerts there We uh, DJ shows, corporate dinners. Uh, we have something called the A-Lot, which is a really big space that fits about 3,500 people. We've done tons of concerts out there and corporate events. We have a, uh, something called the Grounds, which is really 15,000 people plus. We did iHeartRadio last year and doing it again this year, a number of other things. We have our food and beverage, um, our, our restaurant called The Beast which is uh, uh, Todd English is our, our partner with that. And as it sounds, um, it's not necessarily targeting vegans. Uh, there, you, <laughs> you can get away with some stuff there, but it's, it's uh, barbecue and grilled and delicious and out of this world um, brought to, you know, with Todd's expertise. We have Oddwood Bar, which is this awesome bar in the middle of everything that's under this incredible tree that has thousands of LED lights. Um, we've got, uh, Liftoff Lounge, which is outside, a 130-foot bar where you go up in a circle and you kind of spin around slowly. It's not really a thrill ride. It's just an incredible view and a great place to have a drink um, and on and on and on. And then we have some retail. We have Wild News, which is our, our uh, festival wear brand, which is doing really well, and some ice cream and candy and things like that. So that's kind of what we are in a nutshell. 
all of it, as I said, uh, I forgot to mention, we have powered zip lines where you fly around the roof uh, and the ceiling. <laughs> we have, um, you know, there's a whole bunch of stuff going on. And and it's funny, I'll stand outside and people will walk up to me, they'll see my lanyard and they'll say, uh, do you work here? And I'm like, yeah, they'll be like, what do I do here? And I'm like, you got all the way here and you don't know what to do. They're like, I was just told I have to go. And I'm like, step inside, you'll figure it out. They step through the tunnel and their minds are blown. That's unreal. I mean, I, you know, wrapping my head around all of this is, is incredible. Right. And so, so you've got all these different experiences, right? Which ones are you like, key? like when you go there, what, what do you have to, what do you have to try every time you go there? <laughs> that's a really good question. I mean, oh man, and that's the thing. It's really meant to to cover what we're finding, which is multi generational, multi generational, multicultural. We're you know PG during the day, family friendly during the day. Definitely more R at night, and in fact, twenty one plus after nine nine o'clock. Um, but you know, for me personally. The events are always, you know, awesome. We just did something called We're All Mad Here, which is kind of an Alice down the rabbit hole party for the entire building. And it's just, it was awesome. Um, sometimes if I'm looking for a little mellow, go up to Five Iron, have a couple drinks, you know, have a couple beers, watch a baseball game while I hit golf balls. And the great thing is, it's very hard to lose a golf ball when you're playing. I mean, I'm not great, but I've yet to lose a golf ball there. So uh, uh, that for me, and even my, my teenage boys, they love everything. They love me, Owl Wolf and Wink World and all that. But then after it's kind of like, let's go kind of relax our brain a little bit and hit some balls. So it's, you know, dueling ass is awesome. I mean, it's just really, you know, depending on what the mood is, um, but uh, it really does cover the spectrum. So there's really something for everybody then at this venue. I mean, it sounds absolutely incredible. Yeah, congratulations. That sounds Thank amazing. You. Thank you. We're we're excited about it and looking to looking forward to opening Orlando. That's next on the uh, on the blocks. We just announced that. Um, take a little while. It's going to be bigger, uh, but because um, it's Orlando. But uh, we're excited about that. So now you you opened like right at the right at the height of the pandemic. Is that right? Yeah, I mean, we, we technically opened September 2020. Like, ah, oh, this thing's got to be over soon, right? Um, so <laughs> open the doors. There were, none of our tenants were, were open for obvious reasons. I mean, it was just, you know, an unusual time to open. And in hindsight, you know, our, our thinking, in hindsight, I was going to say it was the right thing to do because our thinking at the time was, people want to get the heck out of their homes. And we know there's no you know, tourist activity really going on, but the locals are very important to us. We lean into the cities that we're going to be in and Las Vegas being our first, of course. And we just open the doors and let people walk around and we had the bar open. That was about it. And it just, people connected with it. And we were so excited to see that. And then our tenants started opening and, you know, there are all types of capacity restrictions in 2021 in the beginning of the year. And, you know, challenges and getting things open, staff was sick and, you know, all kinds of all the stuff that we all remember and don't want to think about, but happened. Um, but come, you know, April, May, we were largely open with a lot of our tenants, most of them, and it was just blowing the doors off. Right. So we've been open for really that was last year was our first full year. And with all the capacity restrictions and and tenant staggered openings, we did over two million. We had over two million guests visit us. And based on what we're seeing this year, we're expecting to really uh, blow that away, um, which is awesome. Wow. Wow. Well, so you've got, you know, obviously uh, a newer business that is, that is, you know, just rocketing out. I, you know, I think that one of the things that, that reaches out to me here is that, you know, you're providing something that everybody needs right now. I think when you and I were talking before, it was, you know, everybody's been trapped for a year, for two years. And, you know, this seems like a place that you can go and, and just be around people like just be in an experience different experiences different groups of people different vibes of people it sounds like you've really built a place where you know that is almost like come back ready from the pandemic exactly i mean and the reality is we obviously created the concept and built the the building prior to the pandemic and and we felt that there was a need for that prior to the pandemic i mean with everything going to you know these devices and and, you know, we, for those of us who have kids, it's like, oh my God, you know, you, you think you're connected, but you're actually separating yourself. Like, please, you know, and, and we saw that. And of course, 
there's other factors. You, you look at what used to be communal meeting points in a lot of um, areas were malls, and those are obviously struggling and less relevant, particularly to you know younger consumers. So we saw that opportunity to bring connection back, right? And we're, we, we, we do everything we can to be highly, highly inclusive. We like to say we're for everybody but the haters, right? So <laughs> we don't care what your tribe is. We don't care really what your age is or what your, anything like that. It, it's, you know, we don't only need 23-year-old, you know, uh, ravers coming in there. It's really very, very inclusive, multi-generational, multicultural. And, um, and that's been really reinforced with the pandemic, right? Where, where people really did get separated from each other, from their own families. So we, we want to believe and we do see that we're providing the ability for people to connect with each other, connect with culture, music, um, entertainment, but really connect with themselves again and kind of experience things that we all probably took for granted in 2019 um, that most of us won't take for granted going forward in our lifetimes, a lifetime. So, you know, we, we, that's what makes this job awesome, by the way, um, because it's not like, uh, you know, we're making uh, envelopes, no offense to people who make envelopes, but this, <laughs> we feel like everyone who walks into work every day realizes that they're part of delivering joy and surprise and delight and wonder and, you know, just crazy stuff. You know, I'm trying to watch my words here um, <laughs> to, to everybody who walks through. Well, and, and, you know, I think it's, it's funny because a lot of people, you know, with the pandemic, a lot of businesses decided that they were going to cut back. They were going to scale back. They were going to pull back and, you know, really never put the stuff back out there again. Right. And, you know, so now, you know, the value proposition of business seems to be a real conversation that's happening. Do you feel like your creativity, your energy, your concept is built to really bust, uh, you know, the the issues the market is having with with value proposition? I mean, I, I, I'd like to believe that. I, and I think, look, I mean, there's two ways to go when there's some kind of frankly, cataclysmic, you know, uh, event that, that happens. You either, you know, embrace change and, and head straight into it, you know, full speed ahead, or you stop and you say, you know, everything I know is now different. And, and I don't think, you know, a lot of people will make, it more dramatic than it needs to be. And you see a lot, you know, particularly in hospitality and F and B, a lot of places have yet to sort of reawaken. You know, I go into places, I'm in New York right now, and I go into places and I'm like, you're still set up for the pandemic. Like you've turned your restaurant into a warehouse. I like, I get it. Like, but I really don't want to sit around boxes anymore. Like, you know, clear it out. I want to forget about the pandemic. And that's really largely what we're focused on. We want people to forget about, and whether it's the pandemic or some loss you had in your life or troubles that you have at work or whatever, we want people to forget that. And that's a mission that I think, you know, uh, we, 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 we don't find it difficult to get behind. That's outstanding. And, you know, it's gotta be, it's gotta be, you know, that energy has gotta be that, that creativity has gotta be transferable to the team, right? I mean, are you, are you finding the engaged, uh, you know, team that you need in order to be able to pull this off? So it's not easy, you know, um, because at the end of the day, you can build a, you know, 260,000 square feet of really wild space and themed out and well lit and, you know, show controlled and all that. But it's you need the people inside. Right. They're the ones who really that's what people as guests remember or, you know, whether they're walking in off the street or some corporate event or whatever it is. They remember the interactions with humans. Right. Because after all, we're human. So it's fine to have technology. I mean, technology plays a big role at Area 15, but it's the human interaction with our people that sets the tone. And that's what gives you the five star review versus the two star review. You know, you have a rough interaction with security on the way in that'll ruin your night, right? I mean, it'll ruin my night. We've all been there, right? Like someone looked at me the wrong way or gave me a little bit of a hard time for whatever reason, kind of sets you off. It, it'll change your state of mind as a human being. So the people are so critical. And, and you mentioned creativity. They, you know, this business model, uh, you know, I said to you before, Chris, you know, I work for a couple crazy people. And I mean that in all the positive sense of that. I mean, they just 
you know, never stop dreaming. And they're, they're a couple of kids at heart, um, but they're also very, you know, uh, uh, business minded and pragmatic. So this is meant to be something that, that is, uh, you know, obviously highly profitable, but, but at the same time, it's all driven by just hyper creativity. And we, and we want our people to share in that where a lot of venues, a lot of places have their rule books, you know, this is what you do and never show you stray in our world. Yes, we have that. Obviously there's policies and procedures and all the kind of things that requires, you know, uh, that, that is required to, to run a successful business. But at the same time, we want people to be problem solvers. We want them to go out of their way. They see someone with a, an expression on their face that's confused or sad or whatever. You go out of your way to see if you can connect with them, you know. And and that's that's not easy to find, right? Um, because it really takes a, a, a different kind of personality. And a lot of the people we hire are young, right? You know, they're bartenders and barbacks and and um, you know ticket takers and whatever it may be. And you know, a lot of these folks have been wearing a mask for. Three, you know, some some very formative years, like early years of their careers, or not being able to interact with humans at all for obvious reasons. So it's challenging, you know. But uh, we keep working at it, and and you know, we think we're finding the right team every day. Awesome. Well, you know, it sounds like. It sounds like this is a, a, a you know, an adult playland, really, uh, you know, for everybody to get out and to regardless of, you know, your age, what you're into. It just sounds like there's something for everybody. So, uh, you know, it, it, congratulations on, on on the build out here. You know, I'm, I'm excited for Orlando. I, I'm sure that, you know, I've, I've only been talking to you here for, you know, a half hour or so. And, and I'm excited for Orlando already. So, uh, you know, that's that's awesome. Yeah, Orlando's going to be amazing. You know, seventy something million visitors typically a year, and they're they're looking to hit a hundred million, and um, it's it's crazy. And there's so many people, and that is, you know, it's interesting. Las Vegas and Orlando are very different in many ways, of course, but also very similar. People go there to be entertained, right? And um, to both both destinations, but slightly different angles, obviously, or very different angles. Um, and, um, you know, so where Las Vegas is, you know, during the day, there's not a ton for families to do. So that, that business is always heavy, you know, heavy, uh, traffic at night. It's, it's like battle, right? Everybody's battling for the, you know, that, uh, that, that bottle service customer or whatever. We take a different approach. We're not really going after the $20,000 table, you know, um, you know, whale that's coming in there. Sure. We love them, but, um, not exactly, <laughs> not exactly our vibe. We're gritty. We're more rave. Like, you know, we're looking for kind of that next generation of, of, uh, of party or at night that is, um, you know, has maybe a little bit different sensibility. Orlando, on the other hand, a couple of things to do during the day, right? You know, I don't have to name them, right? So then, you know, Universal is building a massive, you know, addition or, or new new campus there. It's going to be awesome. And, um, but at night, if you ask me, there's not a lot to do down there unless you want to go back to Disney or whatever. And a lot of parents who, you know, they have great, you know, uh, childcare and everything. They feel like they're, you know, they're in good shape there, but they kind of have nowhere to go except the hotel bar. <laughs> so we, we think that's going to be, uh, it'll be interesting to see how uh, things change when we get down there for that particular uh, location, but we're really, really bullish about it. Obviously. Yep. What I love about this whole conversation, right. Is, you know, a, a lot of people have boiled hospitality, you know, whether it's in the media or, or, you know, general conversations, you know, hospitality is boiled down to a business. It's boiled down to a transaction. It's boiled down to, uh, you know, can you find the, the team? Can you get the supplies? If you can, is there value there? Right. And, and I think that what you're doing is needed in the industry, right? Because it's, you know, we're here to be creative. We're here to be exciting. We're here to have energy. We're here to be unique. We're here to provide you an experience. And, and that's what hospitality always was. Um, exactly. You know, it's, so yeah, it's about, ahead. it's about having, you know, we were talking about this, but it, it was, it's about having an energy and, and, um, and there's different kinds of energies out there and none are necessarily wrong, but it's matching all of the things you mentioned that drive a P and L with a, with an experience that tends to be about energy in, in, in our opinion and, and having an energy that people will walk out when they go home, say like that, I felt a certain way. Right. 
And now you can feel, you know, you could go to a quiet coffee shop that has an energy and it works, right? If you like, that's where I want to go to start my day. I don't need loud and rambunctious. I just want to have the, my fancy coffee, you know, you, but that takes work for that coffee shop to be able to deliver that. I've walked, you, we all have walked into plenty of coffee shops that didn't deliver that. And you're like, okay, I'll get my cup, cup of coffee and get out. Probably never go back again. But we all have our favorite, if you drink coffee, our favorite coffee shop, right? Because it has that vibe to it that fits for whatever our personalities are. Um, so, so yeah, you, you got to get, I mean, especially these days with inflation and oh, everything going on, the P&L has to ultimately work. But what people will come back for is that energy. And that's the thing that you have to deliver every time. Ah, that's awesome. That's awesome. So, so Dan, you know, I always, I always like wrapping up these conversations with thinking about what's next for our, our industry, right? You know, what, what kind of advice are you giving your new leaders as they're coming on board, uh, you know, to help them be successful? I mean, it, you know, it's funny you say what's next. Cause that's, that's, uh, that's our new, I'll, I'll foreshadow something. Our head of marketing will kill me, but that's, that's where we're going in terms of our marketing campaign, because it's always a question of what's next. So that actually is related to your, your question too. We need our leaders constantly looking around corners, right? So what is next, right? What, what are we hearing? What are we hearing from our guests? What are we hearing from our vendors? What are we seeing in the marketplace? What's interesting out there? Explore, you know? So our leaders have to be um, innovators, entrepreneurial, right? They need to see the big picture and be strategic because we have leaders that own P&Ls, but the P&Ls are all intertwined in our world, right? There's no... You know, if you go to, uh, if you're in Las Vegas, you know, the fashion show mall, the, the P&L, the, the, the revenue center that drives the rules of the day are tenants, of course, right? And as it should be. They do events. They do a lot of cool things there. But at the end of the day, the tenants have to, are, are going to be the determining factor. Are they happy? If they're happy, we're happy. In our world, it's really kind of an unusual balance. None of the business lines in the traditional sense are invented by us. It's F and B, it's tenants, it's activations and, and rides, it's events, it's, you know. It, so all of that is, is relatively standard stuff, but in our world, it's so balanced. Our leaders have to understand that balance. And that's really important to us. And lastly, and this is age old. I mean, I, I've always said this, whether you're talking about area 15 or whatever, we need problem solvers right? Because that's what life is. It's just a collection of problems that, you know, you first have to know how to identify the problem. That's nine times out of 10. What I've found is that people are identifying the wrong problem to solve. So they go down a path and it's like, we did it. And it's like, but that was, you did that, but we still have this over here. So identifying the problem and solving the problem is, and that takes creativity. That's where creativity, you don't, that doesn't mean you have to be a singer or dancer or anything. It just means you have to be creative about how you look at your business and problem solve. That is awesome. And, uh, you know, if I was, if I was a leader coming into your organization, that sounds like a, like a license to hunt almost. I mean, like, you know, get the idea, get the energy, constantly apply it. You know, the P and L has to be delivered on, which is great, but it sounds like there's more ahead. And, and, and that's, that's how you retain people is always have that more ahead because people are excited about what's next. I like it. Exactly. I mean, and that's, you know, you, you know, people talk about this all the time and you, I, I've heard throughout my career, you know, people ask me, what's my career path here? You know? And I'm like, well, <laughs> do really well. And I know it's a lame answer, but you know, and opportunities will present themselves, but it's, it's incumbent on the company. I believe that the, what the company should do is not necessarily say, here's your career path. You go from A to B to C to D and you know, two years, that's like, that's, you want that go to the DMV, you know, they, they'll have a very structured thing for you, but if you, it, but it is on the company to provide growth. Right. And, and growth leads to opportunities and opportunities mean career path. But like people will ask me, like, how did you you have a, such an interesting career path? How did you plan? that? I'm like, are you kidding me? It's all random. You know, it's I mean, I'm sure there was something back there. I didn't do things I didn't want to do. But how I ended up here, God only knows. But um, and you look back and you say, oh, that's interesting. I made this decision that put me in this direction and that led me to something else. And that's really what you know, people should be looking for are, are companies that allow them to be creative and also are focused on growth and opportunity like that. That's incredible. All right. Well, you know, Dan, we're, we're pretty much out of time today, but uh, you know, I wanted to thank you very much. You know, where can people find out more about area 15? 
the web area 15.com. So that's the easiest way to do it. Um, and, uh, obviously if you're ever in Las Vegas, swing by, it's easy to get to and, uh, and, and come have your mind blown. Awesome. And then do you have a platform of choice that people can uh, look you up on LinkedIn, Instagram LinkedIn works that? well. Okay. I'm not on Facebook. I mean, I was in the uh, social media space for a long time and I'm one of those guys who said, Oh, that was really bad for me. <laughs> so, uh, but I do use LinkedIn. That's easy to find me there. So uh, awesome. Yeah, awesome. Well, I'm the only one there. <laughs> <laughs> well, dad, this has been uh, absolutely incredible. Uh, hopefully you and I can connect again in the future and, and hopefully everybody who's listening to this gets out to area 15 and, and gets a chance to see you. All right. Well, I appreciate the time, Chris. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye.